do wink wink. What is up? This is going to be a very quick tutorial. Someone sent me a message saying that they were they were working on some stuff and they were looking for some help. Basically what they're wanting to do is this here. So they are wanting to take a music file, run it through some filters, but they want the filters to be controlled by the tracker. Uh, and the tracker are coming from a webcam. In this case, we're going to be tracking color. Originally, we were looking at tracking objects, but that's way above the level that uh, they're working at at the moment. So I decided to move past that. And we're looking at how to track a color and then use that color to control. Uh, in this case, it's going to be a high pass filter that is really quickly made as a cascading filter. So it takes original signal, minuses it from a low pass, and it does that four times. And when you minus the low pass from original, you do get a high pass filter. I'm not gonna go into the sound theory of that, but that's the very basic side of that. So <clears throat> if I open the tracker, I'm just going to quickly make, I'm not gonna bother making any changes here. We'll do it when we actually make the patch. So what we do is we open. There I am. I have a lovely pink section on my phone here. So there I am, it's tracking my phone. And then what, oh. Hopefully my phone will stay awake long enough for this. So it's tracking my phone screen. And now we're gonna do is go over here. I'm gonna put that down for a moment. I'm gonna pick a track. I've got it all set up to play already. Uh, so it's running through this at the moment, perfectly f f normal sounding. We introduce our color. And as we move it about, it controls the high and low pass filter attached to the song. It's a bit fiddly at the moment because of A, how poor the lighting is in here. You can see the ISO is really high. And uh, the fact that my phone screen is really reflective of the monitor I'm working off. So, a better way for this would be having a webcam facing down at a desk with a light. That's how I've done it in the past. And then any colours you introduce there are always going to be a bit more uh, clearer, less reflective. So try something like a non-glossy coloured card. That'll be fantastic for this. I just don't have any. Maybe I should get some, considering the fact that all I do is track colour in movies. Right, so that's the general idea of what we're going to do. And how we do it isn't that drastic. So it's made up of two things. One, our basic advanced color tracker. And two, our basic advanced music loader. Uh, some tutorials that I've done in the past, I will link them up at the top here. So go and check them out. And if you haven't seen it before, essentially what our color tracker does is it takes a video, it uses a sucker here, to allow us to select a color in uh, the color of a pixel inside our frame, passes it through some uh, some simple maths, and it gives us the both the outer bounds and the center location. This is the center one. This is most important for uh, a box that it draws when it tracks a shape. So if I click a color, you'll see it starts drawing a rectangle, and over here we have this uh, pick slider that is drawing the center point of this rectangle. So when you select a color, say a colored card, uh, something like this little dot on my headphones might be good. You see it's connecting between both of them there. Uh, what it does is it gives us the center point and as you move it about, it allows you to move this knob here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just in case you do start using different webcams, I'm gonna do something called get dim plug that in uh, to the metro so it's constantly banging and plug that into the top of the jit.qt.grab and then I'm going to root dim and all this is going to do is going to give us a message hopefully with the dimensions of the current webcam footage so we've I've set this to 320 by 240 but 
<clears throat> say you were wanting to run it at 1080 or 720, however good your web camera is, you can remove these and do uh, turn on the enter. And what that'll do is it'll adjust to the size of the input. So now I've got that, I'm going to unpack them into zero, zero. And that'll give me two values that I'm going to bring over here. Let me just see which one's which. Uh, the bottom value is going to be that and that. So what that means is I have an unpack here that's bringing out 240 and 320, the X and Y max of our image. And I'm plugging that into this pick slider here. So that means that if you do change source, you do change image, uh, it means that this pick slider will always scale from zero to the maximum and zero to the maximum on the X and Y appropriately. Uh, completely just for maintenance. I did talk about it in the actual tutorial, but I was just too lazy to actually fill it out there and then. <clears throat> so now I've done that, I'm just gonna highlight this all and remove from presentation so that we don't see the red line. What do we need to do? So at the moment, we pick a color, it starts tracking it and it gives us some coordinates here. So if you're unfamiliar with the way the pick slide works, uh, what it does is it gives us two outputs. On the left, it gives us the horizontal and on the right, it gives us the vertical. So literally, all we'd need to do is do send X, send Y, horizontal, vertical. I'm doing X and Y. I think the horizontal and vertical are actually the wrong way around here, but it's just a name of a variable I'm sending. And that's it. We are outputting these center coordinates again so that we can pass them into our filters on the other side. So I'm going to control A, control C, and close that. And then my use loader, I'm going to make a new sub patch and call it tracker. And in here, I'm going to paste everything. So now I have a sub tracker, a sub patcher, excuse me, with my color tracker. Way too many words today. <clears throat> oh, and now I'm joking. It's all going wrong. Send help. So we can put that over there. And we know that we're getting a send X and a send Y value. But now we want to receive them. Simple as that. Almost. In the original uh, music loader tutorial, I just threw in some cycles that completely mess with the sound. So if I open a track, Uh, there was this was mad reverb or bending the sound and reverb excuse me so they're applicable all you'd need to do is plug x uh, scale x and then plug it into here but i want to actually do the filter was something that was specifically asked for so i'm going to delete that i'm going to stop my music from playing and i'm going to make what i think is the simplest filter possible so first thing i'm going to do is introduce something called a one pole, which is literally a single pole will pass filter. Uh, I'm going to set that as a default of a 5000 hertz. And I'm going to make four of these just because it's, it's much cleaner on the sound when you uh, cascade it. To make a low pass filter, a cascading low pass filter, you literally just one, two, three, four. Our sound is now complete. Simple as that. Going to add a integer box that just allows us to control the hertz or the frequency on the end of all of these. Plug that in. Open our sound, and you'll hear that as the value increases or decreases, we pass and control the value. So, so a low pass filter does exactly what it says in the tin. I just added two spectrometers here. Or what are they called? Spec spectroscopes and you can see here this is the raw f f raw file and this is it after being cascaded four times through a low pass filter of 2511 hertz so you can see it lets the low pass through and it starts cutting off all the high and we start getting this really muffled sound and the lower the low pass the more it cuts off so you hear less So we can get rid of them. And there we go, we're 
<clears throat> pretty much half done. A high pass filter uh, is a bit more complex, but in its simplest form, what we can do is duplicate our low pass filter and introduce a minus. Because without doing too much crazy sound analysis here, when you minus an original value from its low pass value, you get the high pass value. So we pass the output into that and an original sound into the that side. Duplicate that. That gets that. Duplicate that. That gets that. Duplicate that. That gets that. That gets that. That gets that. So, <clears throat> in every case, our original sound is being minused from our low pass and then passed in again. So we have original sound minus low pass. That's what's missing there. That's why I'm confused. Original sound, low pass. Original sound, low pass. Original sound, low pass. Original sound, low pass. Straight into our... Oh, here's another issue here. So. Uh, there is probably a lot easier way to mix two signals, but I don't know what that is. So I use a sound, an audio matrix. Gonna give it two channels. Now, now I've pre-worked this out, but I'm gonna pass that message called 001, 101, 111111. Now, all things going smoothly. Pass that into our matrix controller. And, oh, one's wrong. I've missed a zero, that's why. Zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one. There we go. So now you can see the first four light up, pass that into the matrix, and all that means is that both our, all our channels are gonna be open to play all of the audio files. So channel one will play audio file one, channel two will play audio file two, and channel one will play audio file two, and channel two will play audio file two. It just allows everything to pass and mix. I'm not gonna fill it in the gain, which is the next one, because we want them to be one for everything. I'm going to load bang this as well to make sure that's always open. And then what we do is we give it audio file 1, audio file 2, and then we split this at the end there as well. So now if I play that, I'm going to start looping it as well. So now you can see that we can play with these, get some really Pumping sounds, man. Sorry, playing with those integers is really boring, so I am going to introduce dials. Now, by default, dials go from 0 to 128, and instead of fiddling with that, I'm just going to scale the output. So, I'm going to do scale 0, 1, 2, 8 to from about 0 to about 10,000. That'll give us some really nice numbers to play with. I'm going to visualize that. Plug it in, plug it in, plug it in, plug it in. And now you can really see the difference. And we're almost a DJ. Almost. Almost a DJ. Gonna give me another one of them. Super. <clears throat> and hopefully you can see where this is going. Remember, we're still trying to track things here. What I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to plug my X tracker into this, my Y tracker into that. I'm going to do a little fancy thing here with an outlet. Plug that into there. I'm going to copy both of these and introduce something called Send Color Tracked. Do received, receive color tracked. Plug that into there, there, and there. So I'm going to select them and that. Copy them. And I'm going to plug that output into there. So now in tracker, all we need to do is open it. Turn on a metro. I'm just going to bring this down here to make sure this is working. So now I should be able to pick colors. Super. So don't worry so much about this color not updating properly. It's always really fiddly because I think I've got this set to float, but it's actually working from 255. We'll close that. Got to get on my pink again. Got something. In Tracker, we need to scale these values because at the moment they're going between 0 and 255, and our dial is expecting 0 and 128. So, so I'm going to cut uh, these separate. I'm going to close this for now just to. I'm going to introduce a scale. Zero, I'm going to put one here and zero, one, two, eight. Duplicate that. So, why scale zero, one? Because if we take our high input value and attach it to that and attach that to that, that now means that every time that we update our video, uh, our scale will also update, so then no matter what video we look at, no matter what video source, scale X and Y will always scale between 0 and 128 for the dial. There we go, that's much better. So I'm not sure how well you can actually hear the audio track coming through. I might have to play with this in post a bit, but it's it's different. I, I much prefer the quality of the high pass filter that we made here to the low pass, but uh, I, it's because most tracks are mastered in a way that they, they already have all the uh, highs cut off anyway. So when you try and pass them through, you're not really changing the song that much. So hopefully that made sense. Hopefully you understand what we're trying to do here, but that was a really quick look at how to turn a few of the patches that we made in the past into a colour tracker, music, picture, equaliser, player thing. Also, this tracker and this method would be really applicable in Ableton and Max for Live if you're that way inclined, wink wink. See you guys later.